Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next The Promised Neverland anime review. This one's going to be for Season 2, Episode 7. And this is an interesting episode because I see this, the reaction to this episode being very mixed. I think some people are going to lean on the side of actually, you know, kind of like last week's episode, they actually covered some really interesting ideas with regards to character, Norman and Emma sort of going up against each other, the ideological clash, um, and so on. But I can also see some people also coming in and being like, um, actually, there's very little substance behind what the two of them are saying to each other, and it was just an episode of them talking back and forth with very little animation um, going on here. Uh, they continue the process of telling us everything and showing us like absolutely nothing, and of course, uh, they continue to uh, do their own uh, adaptation and, you know, changes that need to be made because of what they are skipping or what they're not skipping and so on. So it's a bit of a mixed bag for me in that I can see kind of points from both sides because I like in general in the story of the Promised Neverland the um, kind of back and forth between Emma and Norman. I like that clash of ideals. Uh, like I talked about in the last video, I like that sense of the, the manga taking that direction of Emma goes down one path and her experiences shape her and lead to her having this opinion in this scenario at this point in time. Norman has a very different kind of perspective because of what he's been through. The problem here in the anime that I think really heavily comes out here, now that you actually see Emma presenting her perspective to Norman and him you know, disagreeing with it of course, is that with Emma, they have taken away and thus have undercut a lot of what backs up her sort of reasoning behind why she is in some way positive towards demons and why she can be so idealistic. Um, Norman, though, because they, even though, again, they didn't show it, but they've told us about his more sort of a tragic story that he's been through. He's seen nothing but the worst of demons along the way. So he has no reason to be positive about them whereas Emma does, but in the anime, it's basically solely because of Sanju and Mujika. Whereas, at least in the manga, yes, she, she's met Sanju and Mujika, but she's had these other arcs where she's had run-ins with also some of the worst demons, demon nobility, who um, don't just eat humans, but specifically hunt them for sport um, and really... You know, you know, torture the people that they're after. That's what the whole Goldie Pond arc really is about. That also affects the scene later on with Gilda, where, you know, it's a big sort of emotional moment where uh, Emma asks, uh, Emma and Ray ask Don and Gilda to join them on their quest. Um, and G Gilda's just sort of so happy that finally, for once, you know, Emma is including them and not just going off on her own. That feels a little undercut as well because, um, is it necessarily a trait of Emma in the anime that she always tries to do everything you know, by herself and doesn't include the rest of the team? A little bit, but nowhere near as much as it is in uh, the manga because, again, you know, Goldie Pond is an arc where a lot of it is sort of her on her own. And so that plays a big role in terms of, like, that's a major separation point for Emma from the rest of uh, her family. Uh, and that not being here means that, like, we're really lingering on the first like five episodes of this season, which were relatively weak in the grand scheme of this series, to be the core behind why Emma has this whole ideology. And and that's where I think it falls apart a little bit. And you can't, when it comes to the anime especially, can't really argue with people who are kind of saying like, Emma's very idealistic. Like Emma, Norman of course is taking things to an extreme with basically ask, proposing a genocide on the whole race of demons. But Emma is idealistic to a fault, almost, the way it is now. That you can't just excuse because she's a shonen protagonist, necessarily. She's the, character, she's, she's the main character of a shonen jump, you know, uh, manga anime. Um, you can do that in some cases, but I, I think it's quite a heavy example here and what the anime has done, or rather not done, leads you to not being able to be too forgiving of what they, the, the, the way they, they tackle this in that ultimately it is Emma just being like, I don't want to kill them. I, I don't 
like demons as such. I'm friends with a few of them, and I understand them, uh, like the, that there's normal demon children and stuff like that. She makes the, the points to Norman of like, so you're fine with basically killing demon children as well. And he basically is like, yes. Um, that, 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 that still, I suppose, has some impact. But from your perspective of like where you view the characters, like, I think this, the simple scene that they do with like Barbara and the explanation that like, okay, everyone who's from Lambda, like on Norman's side, is dying because of the experiments that were performed on them. That makes you feel very sympathetic towards their side and like not like demons as a whole because of what was done there. And especially like the kind of quite heavy emotional uh, scene with Barbara there. And then Norman also being sort of revealed to be suffering as well. Um, I don't think they're necessarily in the anime getting across Emma's side all that well. Because they've skipped over all of the arcs that included her, that were emotional, that formed the sort of stronger side of Emma's uh, arc. Uh, and they've made it too much into, you know, just, we have to be good, so just for the sake of being good. Um, and again, this is coming from someone who kind of defended this arc in the manga, because pe people criticized the manga version of this arc as well for uh, Emma having a little bit too much, you know, idealism, naivety, um, talk no jutsu, I suppose, to a degree, with where they go with it. Um, but I like it in the manga. I, I just think it's really undercut here by, by the, the lack of everything else. Um, they cover the whole Sanju Majika thing, and ultimately we, we find out in the adaptation Okay, I guess what they're doing is they're basically swapping out the whole Seven Walls arc plot thing, Kubiti Dala stuff, and just creating the importance surrounding Sanju and Mujika. It looks like the one is still going to be included here as the uh, gatekeeper, which we uh, got a brief name drop of. Um, but it also confuses the arc as well, because this also is another thing that makes Emma look a little silly. That they're arguing about, like, I don't want you to kill all the, the demons. Um, and a big part of why she opposes this is that it seems that Norman, despite understanding the value in Sanju and Mujika and their blood, and how it could basically cure all demons from uh, requiring um, the, to eat humans, um, what he, he's not willing to do anything more than just, you know, kill them, basically. Um, he wants to basically take out Sanju and Mujika because he sees them as a way that his plan, which requires them, his poison to force, degenerate them. Um, th th they're a, a, a problem with that whole plan. And Emma's solution is that, basically, okay, here's the deal. You will not kill all the demons, and I'll bring Sanju and Mujika to you. And it's like, um, where's the, like, positive for you there, Emma? L like, you're saying, like, I I'll hand over Sanju and Mujika to you. Like, again, it needed an explanation, because they literally have done, instead of, like, but basically what they've done here is they've replaced Emma basically making the point here. Here's the deal. We'll go after the seven walls. We'll make a new promise with the one. And the promise, if it succeeds, will magically solve everything. Like, literally, through magic, solve everything. Um, and we'll just be in the human world after we make the new uh, promise. Um, here, though, Emma really doesn't have a solution. And so seems to literally just be relying on... If you get to meet Sanju and Mujika, you'll feel the same way I do. I, I, I'm guessing that's the, the perspective that there's going to be, which I, I, I guess can work. But along the way, it's also explained that, oh yeah, you know that location with the pen that you're trying to get to? You can't get there. That uh, gate to the other world has been destroyed. There's one gate left, and that's at Gracefield House. So, you know, that, that that's, I suppose, roughly accurate to... The manga and that there, there is something there under Graceful House as we know um, it's just not the like it, it, it's just a, an interesting way to use a lot of the plot points and threads that are there in the series but like avoid some stuff but include other stuff so um, 
It's going to be weird to see what the mishmash of uh, actual plot elements they include actually is. Because, of course, we have to go back to Grace Field because we have to make sure, like, um, Phil and everyone else is safe. Um, but, you know, there's only a few episodes left and we're still talking about, like, going ahead with a plan to wipe out, like, all of Demon Society. We still have to find Sanju Mujika, do whatever it is we're doing here, potentially still introduce the, the main villain of the series, um, if they're even going to at this point. Um, in that, again, Norman brought it up here. It's the nobles. Uh, it's the nobles and higher-ups in Demon Society that are the problem. Ray goes into depth in terms of explaining it as well. That, yes, even though they knew about the existence of Sanju and Mujika in the past as the overall solution to, hey, you don't need to eat humans, we can just distribute this blood around and everyone can be fine. Why are we making people reliant on eating humans? And it's because there are higher-ups in demon society and they want to keep that power, and that power revolves around the food structure of the world, which is about raising humans. Um, so that's why they call Mujika evil-blooded. That's why they basically stopped that from being a thing and why Sanju and Mujika are out on their own. Very interesting stuff. It is, absolutely. But I'm wondering, like, are we going to get the backstory on the first promise? Like, are we going to have time to do that? Because I think we need it. I, I really think we need it to help to explain and kind of piece a lot of stuff together. But, like, we, we haven't introduced Luvis at all to do some of the stuff right towards the end. And and that's where, like, I'm wondering, like, like do we have time for many or any of these plot threads? And that Isabella, again... A few episodes ago was teased that she's going to be coming back into things and of course we're going to see her when we go back to Gracefield house but are they going to have time for her arc um, and then the, the episode ends with obviously it it looks like potentially we, we might be getting a little bit more insight into what happened with Norman in the past or they're using this as a way to introduce um, uh, Peter Rattray and um, so I'm wondering what exactly the next episode they are going to do Will it be a backstory episode? That'd be interesting. Um, but there's just so much work to do. Um, in that I'm assuming, like, after this actually being a relatively slow-paced episode, because it was just a lot of talking, um, interesting what some of the scenes were about and what they discussed, of course, but um, not really accomplishing much in terms of, like, progressing the story, really. I'm wondering, are they going to have to accelerate again? And, like, could we end, like, next week's episode with, like, they found Sanju and Mujika and they're on their way back. Um, but it has to last a certain amount of days because Norman is immediately going against the deal. You have five days to find them and bring them back and they won't attack, but immediately he wants to, you know, straight away go ahead with the attack, which led to, of course, the scene revealing, you know, the, the experimentation on uh, demons, uh, Barbara's scene, and the reveal that, you know... Norman's team doesn't agree with Emma um, and um, everyone else. So that creates a bit of a rift. Like the, the Norman's two like groups of friends or allies. Um, one fully agrees with him, one disagrees with him, but he cares about both. You can tell that like some of what Emma said hit Norman, but his own experiences with the demons leads to him still believing that his way is the only real way to go about it. Um, because the main point he makes in terms of a very realistic point is that they've eaten humans for so long, they actually like the taste. Even if you offer them the ability to, like, here, you won't suffer the ill effects of not eating humans, they'll probably still want to do it in the first place, and not everyone will be able to be convinced uh, against that. Um, so why is there even any point in trying? And, 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 that, and that's, I suppose, the difference here uh, in being really realistic about it is that, yes, Emma, in terms of not really presenting that much of a solution, uh, isn't being overly realistic about the, the specifics of the situation. But Norman is also not particularly willing to try anything else except the sort of extermination plan. He's ruling out trying on any further degree to make this stuff happen. He sees the use of the blood to change the uh, the whole species to not require humans as not really being something that they can work around the the all the different angles that will come up from that. Um, 
And, and, and again, that, that's interesting, because like there's nuance to both sides. Again, it would be much better if we had had the arcs with uh, Emma up to now. But the point still stands that like it's still all right the way it's being done here. It's just not like perfect in any sense. Um, and again, like like a lot of the scenes, there was emotion behind them. Like I, I did like like the voice acting performance from Emma and Ray. Uh, Emma, yeah, yeah, Ray, but also Norman. And the scene later on where she tells everyone about her plan, and you know they all get behind her because they all know who Emma is, and of course this is the way she she's going to go with things, and they support her. Nice, but uh, this isn't fixing the problems of the season. It still feels like we are... We're, we're, it's this desperate dash to finish this in, in a season. And it's going to be, I think, messy and muddled as we go through this. I think it'll end up feeling potentially like solid and okay, but not anything particularly good. So yeah, any hope that this had of like um, they're going to have the time to properly flesh out the ending, I don't really have. I think we're probably still going to get roughly the ending that we did get in the uh, the manga. So yeah, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see exactly what they do going forward because it's now all about pretty much the last few episodes left is just using the time they have left effectively to cover the most important parts of the story that are left, which... Right now in the anime seems to be Emma and Norman at odds with each other. They're going to have to bring that to a resolution somehow. We have to return to Gracefield House. So we're going to get the kids being confronted by Isabella. We're going to get the kids trying to get Phil and everyone else back. And then Sanju and Mujika, the evil blood, is going to be something of note before we potentially transfer over to the human world. That seems to be where all the, the details are here. Um, they're... They, there hasn't been enough presented about like a lot of the other more detailed elements of the show. They could do it and explain it quite well in the coming episodes, but uh, it doesn't seem like we're quite at the point where we're going to go in depth on a lot of points for the most part. In that, like, yeah, still haven't seen the Queen, um, still haven't seen Luvis or anything like that. So, you know, Sanju and Mujika. It kind of feels like Mujika is the focus more than Sanju. In that, like, they had the scene with Sanju saying that he also, in the future, when humans are more free, would like to hunt them again. Are they going to come back to that? And if they do, you know, there's not much of a connection to make to the other characters that they should be making connections to. So, there's lots of confusion about this. Um, you know, this episode, for me, was just very, very middle of the road. Um, a decent attempt to be accurate, but lacking in quite a few areas so um there's my thoughts on the episode in the comments let me know what your thoughts were but that's been the video thanks for watching and bye